First revealed last December at the Game Awards, Nightingale is a brand new shared world multiplayer survival crafting game set in what they call a rich gas lamp fantasy world. Now this is the first title being made by Inflection Games, a studio consisting of ex-Bioware devs and led by Aaron Flynn, who was involved in the production of many Bioware classics from Baldur's Gate and Knights of the Old Republic to Dragon Age and Mass Effect. They've said that they're looking to take many of the RPG and world building lessons that were learned in those games and bring them into the survival genre. Now Nightingale was one of the games that most caught my attention at last year's Game Awards, so I was pleased when they reached out offering a behind the scenes peek at what they've got in the works. I got to learn a lot more about the game along with some brand new systems which I'll be sharing with you here today. So thank you to Inflection Games for giving me this opportunity for sponsoring today's video and let's just get right into it. What is Nightingale? So let's go ahead and start with the basics. This is a shared world multiplayer survival crafting game. That means about everything that you would expect. You'll venture out exploring the wilderness, gathering basic materials that let you craft low tier items, tools, and weapons. Then you'll use those to harvest better materials and craft better items, tools, and weapons, pushing out into increasingly dangerous territory, fending off deadly wildlife and creatures, and constructing your very own base of operations. This is more or less the overall gist with many survival crafting games, it's the little nuances that set each of them apart. So what is it that's unique about Nightingale? Let's dive into some of that. For one, just the world itself. This Victorian gas lamp fantasy setting is full of ambient life, eldritch creatures, and a wide variety of detailed unique environments that they call realms. World building is said to be really important and a big focus of Nightingale. They are aiming to create a living, breathing space that players want to spend time in. Changing up the formula of gameplay from what many on the team worked on in Bioware games with that new survival crafting spin. They've really spent a lot of time looking at other games in the genre and trying to learn what works and what doesn't, and they hope to take those lessons into here. But then also, add that extra layer of world building, of lore, of history to the game. That's really what they feel is their strong suit coming from that Bioware background. Now, your main drive in the game, apart from survival, is to get back to this mythical city of Nightingale. The world is made up of parallel universes with a never-ending series of realms. We play as realm walkers traveling between these via these portals, these ancient structures that will be transporting us to places like the Feywild Forest, the harrowing swamps, shimmering deserts, and shadowy jungles, just to name a few. Every realm will have its own unique visual appearance, landscape, plant and animal life, as well as factions and dangerous foes that we'll be navigating as we search for valuable resources, recipes, and more powerful equipment. Among each realm's distinct landscapes, you'll also come across plenty of points of interest. Mysterious fey architecture, dungeons, derelict ruins, abandoned towns, ancient ceremonial grounds, so on and so on all of which will also be inhabited by a wide variety of creatures whose design is based and rooted in the folklore and fairy tales of the Victorian period. The Fae are going to be the main enemy in the game. They've created these creatures called the Bound, meant as like a mimicry of humanity that they've sent out into the world and are constantly tracking us down. Now, there'll be plenty of other factions in the game as well, with a wide variety of creatures and class types, from minions to casters, tanks and assassins, rangers, and many other variations. So far, some of the creatures we've seen include the harpies, these giant bats with human-like faces, massive wings, and plenty of sharp teeth. These will be sneaking around trying to steal items from players in their camps. It's kind of a cool mechanic. There's also the bandersnatch, this cross between like a raptor and bat looking thing. Of course, the bound that we mentioned, these like warped humanoids who are constantly hunting us down, many of which have like objects on their heads, like skulls or barrels. <laughs> pretty neat. We've also seen things like large rats with fish faces, towering hill giants, trees that will come to life, and many other fantasy fae creatures, as well as more natural wildlife like deer, birds, rodents, and spiders. Now you can deal with some of the more imposing creatures you come across in multiple ways. This kind of variety of approach is a big thing they've talked about. It's not going to always be about combat and fighting the big scary enemy. For example, they showcase the fact that there's this hill giant in the world and you have the option of working with them by offering them something they want in exchange for a peaceful cohabitation, or you might make him angry, in which case he'll fight and attack your city. So, okay, we've got the various 
biomes or realms as they call them. We've got points of interest and creatures within those realms and then the portals to move between the realms. How is the game itself going to play out? Well, it's going to look something like this. You're going to start off with very little, then gather those basic materials, harvesting trees, ores, and plants, which provide the resources to craft the tools, gear, and weapons. So far, so good. As you continue gathering, building yourself up, you will, of course, come across those creatures to fight. The game does feature first-person combat with a wide mix of different melee weapons, firearms, and even magic that you will have at your disposal. As you play, you'll discover recipes to craft these or just find items in the environment, and stronger and better items will be available the further you progress. As more valuable resources are found deeper in the realms with special ingredients and even arcane technologies that can be used to enhance your gear, there will be this constant push to progress and explore. Speaking of which, let's talk about how that process works. It isn't just going to be that you find these portals and then you walk through them into a new realm. The first thing you have to do is construct realm cards. Now this is one of the big new features and what I recently got a sneak peek at. At. It is a fundamental gameplay mechanic that enables players to use those portals. Realm cards are basically your key that unlocks access to new realms, and they're also meant to give you a bit of agency and choice over what kind of realm you'll travel to next. Think of them almost like a feature selection tool. So as you play, you'll find recipes for all sorts of different realm cards, each with a unique attribute and property. From the environments, weather, creatures, or even resources that a realm can contain. So you may, for example, craft a realm card for the forest biome, for rainy weather, and for fey creatures. And then putting those together at a portal creates a realm with those attributes. There's going to be a large variety of potential combinations using realm cards, and you'll want to tailor them to make realms that will suit your needs. If there is a particular resource you need or a creature type that you want to farm, you can combine realm cards to get exactly what you want. Now, realms will be unique to to each player who opens them. So even if you put together the same combination of realm cards that someone else has, you're not gonna spawn into their version of that realm. You will have your very own unique one. And they've said that these realm locations are a mix of handcrafted and procedural bits pieced together. You can, however, once you've made a realm, invite people to it with you if you so desire. Some realms will be temporary, so you'll go in, fight creatures, collect resources and loot. And then when you leave, it will close for good. Other realms Realms, however, will persist as you keep exploring, allowing you to revisit them at a later date. They have said that they're going to go into more detail on exactly how this works, which realms are going to be temporary or persistent and why, and we'll be learning more about that sometime in the future. Now, I did ask them in concern of this, if biomes are going to be locked behind progression, like for example, will you only come across the snowy or mountain biome after you've progressed your character to a certain point? They said that biomes or the ingredients for crafting realm cards aren't necessarily locked behind progression gates. However, traveling deeper into the realms may require more skill and experience, so there is an optimal path for players, which makes it sound like there will be easier and harder biomes. And while you can technically go to the harder biomes early, that might be much more difficult for you if you haven't built up your player power, if you haven't made gear that's good enough or just gotten strong enough or skilled enough at that point. Okay, so we'll be doing all the survival stuff, gathering, crafting, fighting, making realm cards, traveling to new realms, building ourselves up, and pushing deeper and deeper as we search for the city of Nightingale. What else? Well, the game also includes things like a robust construction system. Although we haven't seen much as of yet, we do know that you can design and will construct estates, towns, and farms from a variety of styles and tile sets. From some of the B-roll, we've seen players building quite a substantial looking uh, mini city. You'll be building up home bases, and this is absolutely going to be something they'll be spending a lot of time on. You'll also be able to upgrade and customize these structures after you've built them. You can even recruit NPC workers that will help you expand your homestead, help automate production, and even assist in gathering resources. You'll also have to fend off incursions by the bound, those twisted fey mimicries that we mentioned earlier. They will attack your structures on a regular basis and you'll have to fight them back or risk losing what you've built up. No word of if there's some sort of offlining potential here or if this will only happen when you are logged into your character. There's going to be plenty of NPCs around the world, not just to hire as workers, but also to interact with, learning more about the lore and backstory, gathering quests that will reward resources and schematics for new things for you to build. Some of these may even assist you out in your adventures.
matters. And remember, this kind of plays into the fact that being ex-Bioware devs, a lot of the team making this game, they're trying to really add a thick level of history, of lore, of world building. And I think a lot of that is going to come through these NPCs out in the world. Now, I know we've mentioned crafting, but specifically some of the stuff you'll be able to make includes powerful gear and weapons, which you can imbue with magic properties, as we mentioned. You'll even be able to cast magical abilities. We have seen this teased a little bit in some of the early footage. You'll also be cooking meals to consume and other consumables like potions that will help you out on your adventure. You'll also have to make specialized tools. These will be required to harvest those rarest resources that are found deeper within the realms. Also, this is a shared world game, so you can play solo or in a group with your friends. Adventuring solo or gathering together with friends in this online shared world, you'll be able to combine your strengths, your skills, and your resources to try to build up your empire and make things better. And you'll also work together to build estates. You can construct buildings as a team, and you will have to work with your teammates as well to face off some of the more colossal apex creatures that are found in the deeper and deeper realms. And then the final big thing that I do want to mention here, if you're unaware, this is a co-op PvE focused game, not a PvP game. This is not a PvP survival game. It's really more about adventuring, exploring, and surviving with people, not against people. Okay, so those are the fundamentals of Nightingale. When can we expect to play it? Well, they are planning to enter early access later this year, currently targeting a quarter four release. They will also be running play tests ahead of time, which you can register for on their website, and they'll be sending out invites to pools of players over time based on a variety of parameters. It's launching on PC exclusively. It's coming to Steam early access first, and from their early access Q&A, we learned a little bit more about what to expect and the timeline, how long they plan to be in early access. They say that they're targeting nine to 12 months. However, they don't want to set a hard cap. They'll keep it in early access as long as that needs to be until the game is complete and ready. In terms of what it will be launching with, their expectation is that they will be having season one content fully available, a multitude of realms to explore across several biome types, including the forest and the desert, a large variety of creatures to hunt from small rabbits to imposing apex creatures. There will be comprehensive Comprehensive building and crafting tools alongside a state management, a progression system that spans all aspects of gameplay, as well as solo and online co-op. And in terms of the difference between the early access and full version, they say we anticipate that Nightingale will evolve and expand significantly throughout early access, including the addition of more story content, new realms to explore, as well as the introduction of the fabled city of Nightingale itself. And there you have it. That is our detailed early look at Nightingale, a special preview of the realm card system and just some of the more specifics and details about what this game is going to be. Thanks again to Inflection Games for sponsoring the video and giving me an early peek at what's to come. I quite enjoyed it. Like I mentioned at the top, this was one of the games that caught my eye from last year's awards and I'm really excited to see and learn more and even just to have this opportunity. So hopefully you guys like the video. Thanks as always for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.